hanging out in center field when the Knolls are on the clay. But at the plate, that leadoff spot is so key to just try and get some momentum going and start things off for the Knolls here. Angelina Bonilla delivers her first pitch. It's a strike on the outside corner as we press play here from Southwest Florida. Bonilla, a senior this year out of Coral Gables, Florida, getting the start against what's a daunting Seminole offense. Their offensive numbers this season are explosive as the next pitch is in there for a strike, 0-2. Angelina Bonilla had her breakout season last year as a junior. Came out and Coach Dero said she made herself impossible to ignore. She helped win the series against Liberty, the first in FGCU history. And she has just continued to rise and continue to succeed from then. A microscopic ERA so far for her this season at a .95 clip over 36 and two thirds of an innings work. So far this season, she'll look to continue that here today. The one two is just a little bit outside. The count will even up. Take a look at the rest of the Seminoles lineup today. Janai Kerr, as you see, leading off in center field. Jason E. Beecham, the third baseman, hits second. Kaylee Harding, the right fielder, hits third. Michaela Edenfield, the catcher, will clean up. Amaya Ross at first, bats fifth. Next pitch, just a little bit inside. The count will run full now. Issa Torres, the shortstop, will bat sixth. Haley Wackaser in left field hits seventh. Katie Dark, the DP, bats eighth. And Devin Flaherty at second base rounds out the nine against the Eagles here today. The count now full here on Kerr. The payoff pitch is slashed foul, and Kerr stays alive. Just a strong lineup through and through for this Knowles offense. You have Janai Kerr up to the plate now, and then Kaylee Harding and Michaela Edenfield back to back at the three and four spot is just deadly for some of these defenses, especially in the teams they've faced before. Rolled over to first, Ricks the backhand will take it to the bag unassisted, and one up, one down for the Eagles. Let's take a look at the rest of their defense today. Left to right in the outfield, Olivia Black, Riley Oaks, and Emily Shirela. Nikki Gibson at third, Sophie Wiley at shortstop, Tiffany Meek at second, Megan Ricks at first, and Neely Peterson does the catching. You mentioned how deep this lineup is for Florida State. You take a look at the offensive numbers entering today before their win against Purdue, averaging about eight runs per game. That'll do. And you know what? Some people are kind of disappointed in this year's Florida State team after losing five key players last year to graduation and running out of their fifth year. Coach Lonnie Alameda says you have to just ignore the noise and remember that this team is rebuilding a little bit, but still extremely strong. Black able to reel it in for out number two, a good start for Benia, two up, two down. Of course, this Seminoles team was having quite the journey to the College World Series last season, lost to Oklahoma. Entered the season ranked at number four, now down to 16 as we enter today. And as you mentioned, a lot of turnover, particularly in the circle as well. That's been a revolving door for them so far this season as they look to rebuild that position. First pitch on the way to Harding. It's just over the outside corner, misses for ball one. I would like to sit here and say that Kaylee Harding is one of the more dangerous hitters on this Knowles offense, but they really are just all a threat to any team that they face, whether it's getting a good ball on the ground and getting the first or some extra base hits. Takes him off of that one, induces the chase to even the count at one at one. The numbers pump up, pop off the page, hitting 385, four homers, 15 runs batted in, entering the weekend for Harding. Benia looking for a quick start right here and get the Eagles to the plate for the first time today. 1-1, one, one, check swing, did she go? She did, count moves to one and two. Neely Peterson quick on that one to get that check. She was the unanimous preseason catcher for the ASUN Conference, and she's a favorite to win the player of the year behind the plate. And she has just been fantastic this season as well. Leader back there. Here's the one, two. Swing and just getting a piece is Harding. She stays alive as it's tipped to the screen. Earlier this week, it was a 6 nothing win against Sacred Heart for the Eagles, so they now move to 12 and eight on the season entering the weekend. I've won two consecutive games as well. The pitching has been the story over the first 20 games or so, so far. An ERA below two as a team. This one rolled foul. Count holds at one ball and two strikes. 
Coach Deros enjoys utilizing his bullpen. It is eight players deep, and that includes Riley Oaks out in center field. She also pitches a bit, but he really likes her in the outfield. But back on the game against Sacred Heart, Allison Sparkman, the freshman, pitched a complete game shutout, and she's just one of the many pitchers on this roster that's really able to do the work and go to length. Next pitch misses down low, two and two, and a phenomenal outing for her, a complete game shutout in that one. Six strikeouts allowed just four hits. She's now 5-0 and oh to start the year in the circle for the Eagles thus far. Count even at two and two, Benia ready. The pitch, swing and a high pop at first base side. Ricks ranging out in the foul ground. It's out of her reach as the count holds. On the other side, Florida State entering at 12 and four now. This is game number 17 for them. Of course, they're just getting their weekend started. These two teams will also face off on Sunday. So plenty of action in what's been a big schedule for FGCU so far. I've had the, gotten the chance to face a couple of ranked teams. This one rolled foul, counts still holds a two and two. And especially early in the season, opportunity to face ranked programs with plenty of prowess, a great opportunity as you prep for a sun play. Absolutely, Coach Darrow said that while the beginning in the first half of the season is important, conference is what really matters. And if playing like this and against big teams is what gets them there and ready, that's what it takes. This one drops in for Harding, a good at-bat piece together from her. So the first hit of the day, comes from Kaylee Harding and the inning will continue here for the Seminoles as that makes way to Michaela Edenfield, the catcher for Florida State. And Benia doing a good job right there, pounding the zone. Well fought AB from Harding right there to drop that one in front of Black and left. Edenfield, one of the many well-known faces of the program. And I know we probably can't get a good angle of it on our cameras, but she has some Women's History Month makeup going on today. She's gone viral on multiple social media platforms for her amazing makeup skills before the game. And it just rounds her out as not just a incredible student athlete, but a person who has many skills. Absolutely, and able to see it shine on the largest stage. Of course, this is a very popular Florida State team. Some of the conversation before was how many Seminoles fans are in attendance here today. Of course, not too far of a drive over here to Fort Myers. Benia ahead 0-2. Here's the pitch. Swing, and this one's hooked down the left field line. Black ranging over. Going to take a good swing at it, and Harding and Edenfield, that double threat back-to-back, -back, getting themselves both in scoring position for the five-hitter, Amaya Ross. Not a bad piece of hitting there. That looked to be down and out of the zone, but was able to drop the barrel on it. Get it all the way to the base of the wall. Here's Ross now. First pitch is up and away for ball one. If you're just tuning in, it was a quick start for Benia. Was able to retire the first two hit hitters quite promptly. But now a single to Harding and now a double to Edenfield. Let's put the Eagles in a bit of a jam here. 1-0. Zips across, 1-1. One Ross so far this season, hitting at a 429 clip, 11 of 11 in stolen bases, so she can burn down the first baseline, really all over the entirety of the base paths. Here's the 1-1, one -one. swing and a miss, good off-speed pitch, pulled the string, and the count moves to 1-2. and two. Angie Bonilla really known for her off-speed pitch and how much it changes speed, and not just the drop in speed, but the ability she has to conceal it until it's too late and it's already being swung at a little bit early. Bonilla just fantastic with that off speed. Just fell off the table. One, two, tried it again, misses down away. Count even's up at two and two. And early on in this game for FGCU, the opportunity to put a stop to this rally, this momentum that's been generated from the Seminoles would be huge. But still plenty early in this one here from Fort Myers. Just a beautiful day. Here for a great matchup here. 2-2. Two -two. Swing and a foul straight back. Count holds even. For Bernia, her last outing was against Central Michigan. That was about four days ago. Went six and a third. Just allowed one run on three hits. It was really good. And punched out eight hitters. 
This is the bulk of the season for FGCU. They had two back-to-back -back tournaments at the FAU. 2-2 two -two is just a little bit down low, a close one. You can see the catcher right there, and Neely Peterson taking a couple steps towards the third base dugout. She, th she thought she had strike three. She absolutely did. Neely Peterson, one of those big energies on the team behind the plate, a great leader for these Eagles. She's just fantastic, and there's not much more you can say besides how fantastic she is. Payoff hit, swing and a miss, foul tip, held on by Peterson. Bonilla works out a trouble as the Seminoles strand runners at second and third here in the top of the first. It's second, bat seventh, Olivia Black and left hits eighth, and Sophie Wiley, the shortstop, rounds out the nine. First pitch on the way to Shirela. Misses outside for ball one from right-hander Allison Royalty. A senior this year from Texas getting the start here against the Eagles here in game one of the twin bell. Here's the 1-0. Swinging it slapped down the third baseline and foul. One and one here on Sharela. Both of these teams known for historically being extremely fast. You mentioned earlier Amaya Ross 11 for 11 in stolen bases. These Eagles pretty much racking up the same numbers. You have a lot of lefties in this lineup. Emily Shirella, Riley Oaks, and then Tiffany Meek and Olivia Black all helping lead this team in stolen bases last year, reaching about 115 stolen bases last year in the top 25 for some of those rankings. And you'll see they want to compete with the Knowles on their speed. It's impressive. So far this season as a team, 31 of 33 in stolen base attempts to one. On the outside corner, two and two. It's averaging just about one and a half swipes a game. And so if you're the Seminoles, you want to keep them off the base paths. Two and two here on Shirela. Here's the pitch. Swing and it's tapped right back and foul. Count holds at two balls and two strikes. So far this season, Shirela hitting a buck 21 in RBI. But as you mentioned, great speed, six for six and stolen base attempts. And don't let that lower average fool you. She always finds a way to get on base no matter what she does to get there. You'll see her at first sooner or later in this game. 2-2. Two -two. Down low, 3-2. and two. And to your point, getting on base at a 256 clip, which is over 120 points higher than that batting average. So... I'm sure as her season evens out, those numbers will continue to rise. Count has run full, three and two here in the bottom of the first. Payoff, swinging a tapper to short, charging as Torres. She gobbles it up and slings it across. One away. Let's take a look at the rest of the defense today for Florida State. Left to right in the outfield, Haley Waycaser, Janai Kerr in center, and Kaylee Harding in right. Jason E. Beecham at third, Issa Torres at short, as you just saw, Devin Flaherty at second. Amaya Ross at first, and Michaela Edenfield does the catching. Here's graduate student Riley Oaks, one of the biggest threats in this Eagles lineup. Steps in for game number 20 for her this season in 2024. First pitch. Swing its tap softly back to the circle. Second baseman Flaherty will shovel to first. Not in time. Oaks shows off that blazing speed. First hit of the day for the Eagles is an infield hit to second. You said it yourself, one of the biggest threats in this lineup for FGCU. Riley Oaks now standing over on first to get things going for her team. And she is absolutely a threat to run over there, as we mentioned. Here's Megan Ricks now, the first baseman. Team leader in walks, team leader in doubles. Plenty of pop in the three spot in this FGCU lineup. First pitch from Royalty is just a little bit outside, ball one. For Royalty this season, Having a good year, 23 and a third of an innings work, a 3.09 ERA, 19 strikeouts over that stretch. She takes a deep breath and now delivers the 1-0 pitch. In there for a strike, top of the zone, inside corner, 1-1. One one. You know, if I were Michaela Edenfield, I would be ready at any second for Coach Deros to give Oaks a green light to try and take second base because the Eagles have that high steal count because he is aggressive on the base pass and he sends them. 1-1. One, one. Swing and a line drive in a left center field for a base hit. Oaks will scamper into second base and here come the Eagles. Back-to-back -back singles, first and second with one down. 
He and is the hitting coach for his team besides being the head coach. Coach Deros is going to be very pleased to see these results so far, just solid contact and finding the gaps with his team. And exactly who you want up in this spot now, Neely Peterson, the cleanup hitter, digs in. You mentioned Coach Deros in his 22nd season, secured his and the program's 750th win of all time against Sacred Heart University a couple of days ago. First pitch to Peterson is roped foul on the third baseline. Absolutely, the first and only head coach FGCU has had as a softball program, and he's made it his own. Just such an amazing career so far. He's at about an 800 win percentage over the last 22 years when FGCU was a D2. They went very far in the national tournaments and oh. has had a handful of A-Sun titles as well. A one is fouled straight back, 0-2. And, and on the other side, Lonnie Alameda in her 16th season at the helm of the Florida State Seminoles. Tremendous career as well. Over 720 wins with FSU. Over 850 if you combine the time with the University of Las Vegas as well. 884 career wins. Here's the 0-2. Just a little bit outside, 1-2. Lonnie Alameda, one of those legends in the softball world at the moment. Just fantastic. And, you know, she's got a few national titles under her belt. That'll do, right? A decorated resume on both sides of the ball today. One, two is just a smidge outside, two and two. That's the beauty of sports in general, but particularly college sports. A lot of these coaches are here for... Decade after decade, get to build their legacies and an opportunity to see two very, very successful programs face off today. 2-2, two -two, tap foul, count still holds. And you'll see a great job by Neely Peterson watching those two balls that went by. They are a little close to the zone, but she knew that they weren't going to be called. That's the beauty of being behind the plate and then getting up to bat. You know what's going to be called and what will not and it really does help you in the long run. 2-2 two -two again, swing and a tapper foul. Good plate appearance pieced together here from Peterson. So far her numbers this year, eight runs batted in. Hitting 283 in what is game number 18 for her. It was 0 for three back against Sacred Heart a couple days ago, but looking to step back up to the dish in a big way right here. Two and two again. Swing and a soft ground ball left side. Fielding it is Torres. She'll shovel it to the third baseman. Beat jump for the 6-5 fielder's choice. Two away. Ricks to second on the play. Make Oaks retired and safe at first is Peterson. You know what? That was a great play by Torres over at, third, at short. Made the lead out at third. Not really worried about trying to get Peterson at first because they know that if they get the lead out, they still have the force at third. Here's Mackenzie Wittenberg now, the DP. First pitch is slashed foul, 0-1. Now you're absolutely right. Taking her deep into the hole right there, leading her to third base, the safe out, but keeps both forces in play as well. And that runner away from third with two away. Royalty, just like Bonilla, looking to work out of trouble here in the first, the 0-1. Just misses low, count evens up. And there's a reason that Mackenzie Wittenberg is at the plate right now as a designated player. She's been hitting very well, just strong contact in pretty much every at bat she's had, whether it's turned out to be a hit or not. She's making great contact lately. Found straight back, one and two. Having a good year. Hitting 297, has driven in six runs to her name as well. So the Eagles look for their first lead of the day, have already entered the weekend having won two consecutive games as well. Arguably their toughest foe yet here in 2024, the Seminoles. Here's the one-two delivery. Check swing, did she go? She did, strike three called. Wittenberg down on strikes as the Eagles strand runners at first and second. Here in the bottom of the first inning, traffic has been a plenty. 
for Bonilla, her inning or her day started with two quick outs, a ground out and a fly out. Then it was a single and double in that order from Harding and Edenfield. That put the Eagles in some trouble, but she was able to strike out Ross to end the inning. 2-1. This is outside, 3-1. Torres having 375. That is a fantastic number in her 15 starts. Um, just especially as a freshman, you don't see a lot of freshmen batting that high. And then also Jason E. Beecham with a 5'11 is just phenomenal <laughs> as a freshman. You never hear those numbers unless you're like a week into playing. It's incredible. Leading the team with 16 runs batted in as well. I mean, you can look through their entire stat page, and there's not one number that seems to be anything close to below average. I think 365 is a team. That would lead plenty of programs around the country for just an individual player. That's their average as an entire roster. Slugging 613 as well. Plenty of pop in this starting line. 3-2 is swung and lined, and a diving catch at second from Tiffany Meek. What a play to take a base hit away from Torres. Tiffany Meek has started pretty much every game for Coach Deros over at second base, and she's showing why right there. She's had a handful of those amazing plays over the last few weeks. Yeah, that's just tremendous right there. That looked like it had a ticket for the right field grass, but instead she was able to wrap it in leather and retire what would be a leadoff base hit. Here's Waycaser. She swings and drives this one to left, having it played perfectly as black. She reels it in, two up, two down. A quick out right there, an important one for Benia. You know what? This is where we're going to see a bit of a test now. There were two up, two down back in the first, and then there were back-to-back -back hits. So we're going to see if Bonilla and the Eagles defense have something to say about Katie Dak and trying to stop that momentum from building. For sure, almost a carbon copy of what we saw in the first inning as her first pitch to Dak misses up and away for ball one. Dak, the designated player today, hitting in the eighth spot. It's Devin Flaherty on deck until the lineup flips over for a second time for the Seminoles. Bonilla ready, she fires the 1-0. Swing and a top spinning ground ball past the dive of Gibson. And that'll sizzle in the left field for a base hit. So that's now three hits with two outs for the Seminoles so far early on today. As that makes way to Flaherty, the nine hole hitting second baseman. Devin Flaherty has been a staple for this team for the last four years. And just because you're in the nine spot does not mean anything. Your job as a nine hitter is to get yourself on base, move some runners, and give some space for that. Backhanded at short by Wiley. She throws to the covering second baseman, Meek to retire the side. Bottom of the second inning, six, seven, and eight, due up here for the Eagles, Nikki Gibson. We'll lead things off against the right-hander, Allison Royalty. Max Tanza here joined alongside Taylor Marks. And Taylor, the Eagles had something going in the first, first and second and one down, but were not able to execute. Stranding a couple of runners. First pitch to Gibson, misses down low for ball one. And you know what? If you want to get things going early in the bottom of this inning, you got to look at Nikki Gibson. She's leading the team in batting average right now. And she's just been solid and super reliable for Coach Diros. 1-0 misses upstairs, 2-0, hitting 4-0-7 this year. Has left the yard once as well. And you have someone hitting 4-0-7 in the sixth spot of your lineup. That's pretty good. Absolutely. I mean, the bottom of the lineup is usually something that's a bit stronger. You have your fast runners in the top. This one's pretty chock full of fast runners and good hitters. Absolutely. Gibson, we mentioned, hitting 407. Both Meek and Black responsible for seven stolen bases. Sophia Wiley hitting in the ninth spot we'll talk about. A lot of solid contact you were mentioning earlier this year. Numbers haven't shown that as much. So there's a strike, three and one. But when you get early in the season and you're working with these small sample sizes, sometimes you could be hitting the ball harder than anyone, and the numbers don't show that. Absolutely, especially when you see the solid contact she makes. There's a lot of line drives in deep fly balls. 3-1 is rolled to short. Torres over. She picks it up and throws in time. One away. Torres has been busy today over there at shortstop. One up, one down. Here to begin the bottom of the second inning. 
Torres has been doing a great job over at shortstop, making great throws over to her first baseman of Ross. And that brings up Tiffany Meek, the second baseman, another left-handed hitter, and a pretty left-handed hit, heavy hitting lineup. First pitch misses up and in, ball one. Tiffany Meek, one of those solid, consistent players. Coach Jiros has a good bulk of sophomores that start. He's got four of them, and actually all four of them are roommates. Oh, really? There you go. Here's the stretch in the 1-0. This is outside. Hitters count now for Meek at two balls and no strikes. Getting that camaraderie for the next set of leaders, I'm sure, for the Eagles moving forward in the next couple of seasons. Absolutely. This team has a great chemistry. They're all very close and enjoy spending time and seeing each other succeed. Next pitch misses down low ball three, three and oh. So we'll see if Meek gets the green light right here. I get a couple of base runners already for the Eagles. Royalty is yet to walk a hitter. Here's the 3-0. Misses upstairs, ball four. There it is, the first walk of the day surrendered from Royalty. And Tiffany Meek, with her good speed, will head over to first base with one away. You know, Olivia Black coming up to the plate is going to do a really good job of not just trying to work her way to get Meek over to second, but some of those play calls where it's just a hit and run or anything to give the runner the ability of more time for that steal so it's not a clean catch and throw for Edenfield, they're going to be amazing at that. First pitch, misses outside, snap throw to first, back in standing up is Meek. And you're absolutely right, especially trying to force some action when you have the top of the lineup looming. You were starting to mention it before we closed the top of the second inning, but these bottom of the order players, in many ways, second leadoff hitters. Absolutely, especially looking at Olivia Black and Sophie Wiley, especially Wiley in the nine hole, being the essentially a second leadoff, trying to get yourself on base so you can go back around and have Emily Shirella up, who is the leadoff for this team, and trying to make some things happen. And you, when you know what the... Eagles are capable of in the circle. Just need a couple of runs early here. Slap to third. Nice stab by Beecham. She'll dart it across for out number two. Mink was taking off over there at first base. She'll get in a second. As the 5-3 put out sets things up for Sophie Wiley. A good play right there from Beecham playing in and for the bag right there. Potentially defending for a bunt. That was a rocket right at her. Absolutely, Olivia Black has been making some really good contact lately. She's been known to lay down some beautiful bunts and some nice little slaps, but that one was just a little rocket over to the third baseman. So here is the aforementioned Sophie Wiley, the one freshman in the lineup today. First pitch is a strike at the knees 0-1. This is game number 21 for her, just two for 24, but has been barreling up the ball and is looking for luck to fall the other way here in this plate appearance right here. Meek with great speed at second. She'll be going on contact. The 0-1 is popped up foul and out of play down the right field side, 0-2. There's a lot of power behind Wiley. She's known in the field and at the plate with her contact. Why she's been getting starting spot recently over at shortstop. It's not an easy thing to do to start as a freshman, especially in a team so chock full of experience. At a premier position at shortstop, might we add as well. The 0-2, swinging a soft tapper past the circle, cutting across his beach hoop. She can't find the handle. Here comes Meek. The plate, the plate not in time. Ball bounces away from Edenfield to second. Goes Wiley. Puts the ball in play, forces the action, and the Eagles are on the board. It's 1-0. That was just an unfortunate series of events for this FSU defense and Meek and Wiley able to capitalize on that. You'll see Coach Diros and his runners very smart on the base pass and they'll take risks. That one paid off. Absolutely, and again, almost into no man's lane over there on the left side of the infield. Beecham came and cut it off from the shortstop in Torres. 
Here's the top of the order, and Sharela, first pitch is outside. Glances off the glove of Ed Field, but she'll gather quickly. And then you could see Meek, who we mentioned runs really well, putting the pressure on, was sent home, and it was a close play at the plate, but it was all secured when Ed Field couldn't could secure the throw on her own. Absolutely, and you just mentioned earlier with Wiley, that's not gonna count for her as it was an error. Tap her to the, in front of the plate. Now both umpires are calling it a foul ball. They're gonna say a hit off the foot of Shirela. That's not gonna count as a hit for Wiley and it's not gonna go towards her average. But you know what, that is what Coach Deros wants to see. He wants to see these solid contacts that get, that get the batter on base and in this case, score a run. If it is indeed ruled an error as well, she would not be credited with an RBI. Next pitch scoots away from the catcher, Edward Field, to third standing up now is Wiley. Two and one the count with two away, and Edward Field, the catcher, will call time. Maybe an off-speed pitch down in the dirt right there, and it's scooted underneath the glove of Edward Field, who went down the block it. And now if you're the Seminoles, you have to be aware of a pitch to the backstop again. We've already seen how aggressive on the base paths the Eagles have been. And this is where the Seminoles need to remind themselves. Coach Lonnie Alameda said it earlier this week in our call with her. They have to cancel out the noise, especially for her pitchers in the circle. Right now, this being royalty to just focus on what they are doing and focus on their game. There's a lot of talk about them off the field, about them not being the team they were last year, about how this how they keep dropping in the rankings. But you know what? Lonnie Alameda knows her team and knows how good they are and how good they can be. She says they just have to tune out the noise. Two and one the count. They're looking to limit the damage to one. Pitch is a strike at the top of the zone, two and two. So the official score did rule that a single for Wiley. And then so you can as well credit her with an RBI, which has given the Eagles a one nothing lead here. Two and two the count with two down here in the second. Pitch is just a smidge outside. A real good take from Shirela. First base is open. O'Reilly Oaks, quite a threat looming on deck here for the Eagles. Benio Reddy delivers the payoff. Swing at a tapper, foul behind home play. It's still three and two. This is one of the other things you'll see from the Eagles at the plate. They're not hitting as well as Coach Duros would like them to. They're averaging a bit lower in their batting averages than he would like. But you know what? Every at-bat goes multiple pitches over a full count for the most part. And he likes seeing his players battle and foul these off. 3-2, ground ball left side. Diving stop by Torres. She'll put it in her pocket. An infield RBI single for Emily Shirela. And the Eagles double their lead, it's two nothing. And that's just a fantastic piece of hitting here. This field for FGCU, amazing work done by the grounds crew here at Florida Gulf Coast, but it is beautiful and well made for slappers, especially with that chop slap. They get a big, they get a good contact off of it and it'll bounce and give these runners time to get to first. First pitch to Riley Oaks, a fastball that runs outside, ball one. And either way, it was probably going to be a base hit with how well Shirela runs. Would have been a miraculous play if Torres got up quickly enough to make that throw. But an RBI single, now the Eagles lead 2-0 against one of the best in the country. Next pitch, swung on and missed. Count evens up at 1-1. One and, one. and the key, obviously, just continuing to add on, especially when you know how dominant FGCU has been in the circle so far this season. Absolutely, it's just adding the pressure. The Eagles always do their best to come out and score first and keep that energy, momentum, and pressure for themselves and put it on the other team. And seems like they're doing pretty well at that right now. Absolutely. I mean, we mentioned the offensive numbers for the Seminoles, but it's completely flipped when you look at the pitching side of things. Averaging Four and a half runs per game allowed. Next pitch, swing and a miss, two and two. So you pair that with the Eagles who are averaging just north of two. You gotta feel good with an early lead here. Two and two the count with two down. Shirela fresh off the RBI single over at first. Here's the pitch to Oaks. 
Bounce straight back. Shirela was on the run, still two and two. You'll see a lot of energy and a lot of noise coming out of that FTCU dugout. They're fired up and they're excited. And they're going to keep trying to pass that bat. It's Megan Ricks on deck as we approach the heart of the order for the Eagles. Here's the 2-2 again. Swing at a high pop-up left field line. Foul territory. Wakecaster slides and can't hold on. Still 2-2. Two two. A good effort right there from Haley Wakecaster. You know, it's interesting to see when I spoke to Coach Deros at the beginning of the season, he said he likes to have his mix of power hitters and speed. He said he gets his runners on and he wants his power hitters to pick up the bat and bat them in. But it seems like these, these slappers are doing okay for themselves. 2-2 two -two is popped up foul. Count still holds. But one thing, too, here against Royalty is they've had plenty of opportunities that have done a good job of putting her under pressure, whether it's spoiling good pitches, getting deep into counts, like you mentioned, plenty of 3-2 counts, three ball counts so far. They've been making it difficult on her. Here's the 2-2 one more time. Swing and a tapper right back to Royalty. She'll field it and throw in time to retire the side. Not before the Eagles jump on the board for the first time tonight. Two runs on a here from Fort Myers. A couple of big hits capped by the RBI single from Emily Sharela. Has the Eagles up by two. It's Janai Kerr to lead things off here for FSU. First pitch on the way. Loops over for a strike. Owen won the count. So Angelina Bonilla comes out to her first lead of the day right here. It's going to try and shut down the top third of this FSU lineup. Panilla so far has allowed three hits, but has been able to work out of trouble. Next pitch is found straight back, 0-2. The problem hasn't been getting the first two outs. It's deeper into those innings where the Seminoles have been able to apply some pressure. Absolutely. You cannot convince me otherwise. A two-out rally is a thing. And when there's that pressure on these players to get on base and not get sent back onto the field, they like to come out and perform. Looped on a hop to second. Meek gathers and throws. It's wide, and it gets away from Ricks. Heading to second is Kerr. She'll get in there without a play. Meek had to hurry over there at second base and just shanked the throw a little bit, and it was out of the reach of the first baseman and Ricks. Absolutely, and she recognized the speed of Kerr, who... It would have been a very close play had the throw been on target a bit more, but you know what? That's what happens when you rush a little bit. Sometimes you want to risk the single in, a, in events that this happens where you now have Kerr over on second. That makes way to Beecham. First pitch is across the outer edge for strike one. They officially will rule that an E4 on the second baseman in me. Who's put in an oh so important run early on here in scoring position? Here's the 0 1. Just a little bit outside. County bits up at one ball and one strike. So that's the first time today for FSU that the leadoff batter has reached here against Benia. Again, just getting underway here in the top of the third inning. Great evening for baseball here. Next pitch is upstairs. Snap throw to second. And they got Kerr caught in a rundown. How about this? Racing her back is Gibson. She'll now shovel to Meek, who's going to win the foot race and apply the tag for out number one. I'll tell you what. What a play from Neely Peterson. She's caught Kerr sleeping at second base. And that is a pivotal out to erase the error. And this is not the first well-executed pickle we've seen this season from FGCU between second and third. Neely Peterson able to just fire it over there and let her defense do the rest. A great tag by Meek. And just the way you have Riley Oaks coming in from center field to be there to cover the base. You've got Meek over from second. You've got everyone taking care of this. All eyes on that pickle. 2-1 is down low ball 3-3-1. Three, three and one. You could see Peterson did not waste a second to get that ball to the second baseman. And Meek who was covering the bag and Kerr was kind of flat-footed, walking a couple steps closer to third, and you could see was caught off guard when she saw that throw snap behind her. 
Next pitch is grounded sharply through and in the center field for a base hit. Wide turnaround first for Beecham. She's heading for second. The tag applied by Meek. She got him. How about that? A couple of base running miscues from the Seminoles and two quick outs. A hard ground ball in the center and Oaks did not waste any time getting the ball in the second. And Beecham getting a little greedy right there. Instead, we'll have to head back to the dugout. You saw that smile and that excitement from Tiffany Meek over at second. There is honestly just not a lot that you can say about that besides, wow, that was a great play by Meek who turned around and was ready for that ball and just saw Beecham on her way over and made the tag. So the first two runners have reached, but both have been retired. Now the bases are empty here for Kaylee Harding. She's behind 0-1 here as Benilla looks to face the minimum. Taps softly on the ground, left side, charging is Wiley. Her throw is wide. Into foul ground off the retaining wall. The second now is Harding. She'll get there without a play. Very similar to what we saw on the E4 from Kerr. And a little bit of a sloppy inning on both sides of the ball. Some base running miscues and a couple of errors now for the Eagles. You know, I feel like it's partly the age of both Wiley and Meek, both underclassmen, and then also just recognizing this. is an E6 on the shortstop in Wiley, and here's Michaela Edenfield, quite a threat. First pitch, perfectly placed across the outside corner for strike one. Edenfield roped a double to the wall. Back in the first inning, she was stranded. Leads the team with six long balls, slugging just about 9.50 this season. Here's the 0-1. Just a little bit outside, one and one, and she was calling that pitch before it got there right there. First base is open with Harding over at second base. You have Amaya Ross on deck. Here for the Seminoles looking to strike for the first time. 1-1 one, one from Benia. Off speed pitch, just missing down low, two and one. And Taylor, what do you think the conversation is like if you're Head coach David Deros in that mound visit right there. I would bet anything that he's just telling his players to calm down, to slow down, and to really take their time because when you're rushing is where those two errors were forced from. He's got confidence in his defense. They've been phenomenal this season, and they're going to continue to perform. He just wants to remind them to settle down a bit. Absolutely. A very chaotic inning. A lot of... Boxes you could check off of the softball bingo card in this frame so far. Two and two, the count with two down. Eagles up by two. Here's the pitch. Up and away, ball three, three and two. Peterson thinking about that snap throw, but decides to hold on this time. Peterson just phenomenal behind the plate. We've said it before and I'll say it again. She's up quick. She's ready to make any throw necessary. Just trying to make sure that no one advances on her watch. 3-2. Upstairs, ball four. Tried it with the off-speed pitch again. Edenfield reaches for the second plate appearance. First and second with two down now for FSU. And here's Amaya Ross. And now they have put the tying run over on first base, but also they've put a force out on first, second, and third. So it's a give and take when you give up walks and have runners on base like that. They've made their lives easier, but they've also made it a bit more dangerous if something doesn't go to plan for the Eagles. First pitch from Benia, swing and a high pop-up foul straight back. Owen won the count. And you're absolutely right. No reason to attack right there against arguably their best hitter in this entire starting nine. When you have the opportunity to set up some extra forces, and attack Ross here has already struck out once today. In fact, that's the only strikeout from Benia so far. 0-1, speeds her up with a fastball and misses upstairs to even up the count. Ross has driven in eight runs so far this season. She has not been afraid of lengthy plate appearances. Ten walks so far this year, second in the program in 2024 in that category. 1-1, zips it across for a strike, one and two. And you said um, second in the program, only behind Michaela Edenfield, who just drew her 13th walk of the season. You're absolutely right. 
big spot here for Bonilla. She's walked the tightrope a couple of times today. Could she do it a third time? Here's the one, two. Strike three, no, just a little bit inside. Uh, my goodness, what a close pitch. You could see Peterson, the catcher, jumping off towards the third base dugout. Bonilla as well, instead, count stays alive. You know, you see that energy from the Eagles defense and hear it in their dugout. They thought that was strike three, and you know what? 2-2, two, two. strike she break off, she got her. Inning over. Angelina Bonilla able to get out of trouble one more time. Strands a couple of Seminoles on here to cap the top of the third. Things off against Allison Royalty. First pitch, Rick shows bunt, taps in front of the plate. Gobbled up by Edid Fielder, throw is not in time. First base umpire said that Ross was off the bag and that'll be an infield bunt single for Megan Ricks. A defensive change for the Seminoles. Janai Kurna out of the game. Kennedy Harp will take her place. And it looks like the three umpires will have a crew chief meeting right here. Again, it was tough to tell from our angle, Taylor, but it's a tough play for the catcher in Edenfield because she had to pick it up right in the baseline, so almost has to throw it over the right shoulder of Ricks, who is running right in that direction. And they're going to still roll it a base hit. Absolutely. And that's one of those, we don't have a replay system up and going just yet. But with that throw, the first baseman, Ross, has to not only reach to get that ball and make that catch as it's right on top of the base, but she also has to give Ricks a running lane to step on first and trying to balance both of those. And the force of that throw it just forces her to step off the bag. And how about this play? 6-4-3 it goes for the twin killer. Torres flipping it to Flaherty, then Ross. And that evades the leadoff single. So if there was any question on whether the first baseman Ross kept her foot on the bag or not, that is now erased. As Neely Peterson grounds into the double play. So two quick outs now as that brings up Mackenzie Wittenberg to the dish. And an interesting moment with Kennedy Harp coming into the game for Janai Kerr. Because remember, Kerr was backpicked at second. First pitch misses outside. Want to know the count on Wittenberg. And you got to wonder if head coach Lonnie Alameda is trying to send a message to Kerr saying, look, we can't have those defensive miscues. You got to be locked in in that moment. 1-0 is missing downstairs. Two balls, no strikes to count. Again, it's earlier on in the season where these games mean something, but from a conference standpoint, Maybe she might be sending that message. Absolutely. And you know what? One of the biggest faces in the last few years of the Knowles lineup, Kaylee Mudge, is not in the game. Grounded to second. Fielding it is Flaherty. She'll throw it across in time for out number three. So royalty for you. As the sun continues to set here in southwest Florida, an immaculate day, 83 degrees. It was at first pitch. First pitch is swung on in line, down to the left center for a base hit. So a leadoff single for Issa Torres. It's Florida State going here in the fourth inning. It is such a beautiful day after we've had two days of some on and off rain. Wednesday, FGCU slated to play Sacred Heart and Western New Michigan after the two teams played each other. Um, the Western Michigan FGCU game ended up getting canceled because of the field's plan condition. And the other two games back later into the night, just so the Brown crew tried to work and make that field playable, which they did, and it has a fantastic sense. Makes her up here with one down. Or nobody, I should say. Not one count. You're absolutely right. We were talking about the break. Got all these fans camping up on the hill behind the outfield walls. Get some shade. A more perfect spot to watch some stuff. All one is down the leg. Not even another off speed offering from the app. Obviously, a lot of family visiting down here in Florida in this month for spring with baseball season started and big traditions. The berms in the outfield, the grass hills that everyone gets to sit and watch. Got a similar effect here. 1 1, got sharply to short. Here's the short tap. Widely going to second for a 1. The relay to first is in time. 6 4 3 double point. 
Plague, the second one killer we've seen over the last five, ten minutes or so, and a big one to eliminate the lead single. Wiley Meek and Ricks trying to not tip their hat to FSU's defense and say, you did that, watch us do the same and get that double play as well. So here's Katie Dack, the DP, nobody on, two down. Bonilla's first pitch. This is outside, 1-0, and, oh, and you know you gotta hurry on that one even though it was hit sharply. Lake Kayser can run as well, a couple of stolen bases to her name, covering plenty of ground to the outfield for the Seminoles. And it was turned perfectly from that duo up the middle in Wiley and Meek. Next pitch, off speed offering, down low, check swing, she did not go around. 2-0 and now. Dak picked up a single back in the second inning, but was quickly stranded after Flaherty was retired to end that frame. You mentioned the hills in the outfield. The grass still working on growing back after Hurricane yeah. Ian came through last year. So it's a bit of a sad sight to see all that dirt, but it's growing back. The trees have started to come back beautifully, and we're all happy here in southwest Florida. It's not stopping all these Eagles fans from going out there. Kind of throwing out a couple blankets, maybe some beach towels, a perfect view. Maybe. Absolutely. I'm going to see both these teams in the long ball. Roll to third. Get sick. Throw it across. Inside to retire the side. How about Angelina Mia? Through four scoreless innings, she has shut out one of the most lethal. Out of the fourth inning, two nothing Eagles as we bring you back to Southwest Florida. It's the FGCU Spring Break Classic. Just getting the weekend kicked off here. The first of two here tonight for the Eagles. They'll also take on Western Michigan just about a half hour or so after the conclusion of this game here. Gibson will lead it off. First pitch from Royalty is a heater that clips the top of the zone for strike one. Gibson, Meek, and Black, six, seven, and eight, two up here in the Eagles lineup, looking to add on to their two nothing lead here. Pushed across both of those runs in the bottom of the second. A one, off speed pitch, hops over for a strike. Oh, and two, Gibson, a sophomore this year. She's one of the few out-of-state players on this FGCU lineup. You'll see a lot of these bigger schools, including Florida State, pull from all over the country. Gibson from Virginia. This one scoots underneath the glove of Ross and through into right field. Another break for the Eagles. They'll take it. That'll more than likely be an E3. Well, the Seminoles' first baseman, a four-hopper that may have had some English on it. She just didn't get her glove down all the way, and it scooted right in between both legs. That's the second error charge to FSU today, and here's Tiffany Meek. Meek is one of those Florida natives. Gibson is the only starter in this lineup who is from out of state. Meek shows Bond, rolls it down the third baseline. It'll squib foul, 0-1. I can only imagine coming down from the Virginia area, get the palm trees and the warmth. I mean, 83 in March, someone not from Florida, I'll take it. I'm sure it's an attractive spot for out-of-state students. It absolutely is, and they love it down here. Shows Bun again, pulls back and takes a strike, going two. I think one of the biggest advantages for any school that's in Florida, California, really the South in general, is the ability to not have to be the programs traveling down here to play in the months of February and March. Absolutely. Here's the 0-2. Checks her swing. Did she go? Yes, she did. Strike three. One down as Meek is retired, holding at first is Gibson. First strikeout of the evening for Allison Royalty. As you were saying, yeah, everyone travels down here in the last month and a half. Both away trips for FGCU have stayed in South Florida. There they you went go. over to FAU and then they went up to USF. And they're not really going anywhere out of the state until the end of the month. First pitch to Olivia Black, who's taken outside ball one. On top of that, too, the luxury of getting to practice on your home field in the winter. Take ground balls out here, I'm sure. Get some live hitting opportunities out here versus a lot of these programs have to hit indoors. She shows bunt, fouls it back. 
County if it's up at one. And it's a different look when you talk about softball being such a repetition sport, the ability to simulate that outside instead of having to be stuck indoors with a bunch of fluorescent lighting, I'm sure plays a pivotal difference for teams that are up north. Without a doubt, all of these out-of-state coaches that I've talked to have said they enjoy being down here this time of year, and it's nice to be able to play on a real field. Runner goes, throw down to second, not in time. A good one, but the speed by Gibson too much. Her second stolen base of the year, and a one-two count here with one down for the Eagles now. Devin Flirty not too happy about that. She was the one that made that tag. Gibson able to just slide right under it. Very close call, but she did seem to slide in there. So a chance for Black to drive it a run. She grounded out to third her first time up. Royalty ready, here's the one two. Swing at a soft tapper left side, ranging over is Torres, her throw to first in time. Two away, to third of the play goes Gibson. Now another opportunity for Sophie Wiley to drive in a run. And you see that once again, Olivia Black 0 for 2 so far on today, but both at bats, she's gotten good contact and she's moved the runner, which is really what her job is. And it looks like there will be a pinch hitter for Sophie Wiley. It's gonna be number 93, Kaylee Roper, who's an, a junior from Venice, Florida. She's coming in to take some big swings here against Royalty. And a big spot as Deros goes to the bench for the first time today. Roper looking to add on some insurance. The first pitch is taken just down low for ball one. So Wiley was able to pick up the infield single, which then induced a throwing error that drove in the first run of the day for the Eagles. You'll notice as this game goes on, the deeper you get into this lineup, Coach Giros likes to have these pinch hitters come in, be a different look for royalty and whoever else may enter the circle throughout this game. He's got Roper on the top of his list to come in and pinch hit because she's got a fantastic bat and she's just one good hit away from entering herself as a DP or heading back over to third base. 2-0 is popped foul straight back, 2-1. and one. In fact, her last four games she has appeared as a pinch hitter. 0 for 4 over that stretch. So far this season, just 1 for 25. With a couple of runs batted in. Looking to come up big right here. Still ahead of the count, 2 and 1. That's Nikki Gibson over at third, 60 feet away. 2 1. Down low ball, 3. 3 and 1 the count. And you'll see that small handful of RBIs right there shows that Roper, just like a lot of this FGCU offense, is making fantastic contact and sending it deep, just happens to be going where they're being played. Here's the 3-1. Swing and a line drive over the leap of the first baseman Ross. Down in the right field of base hit. Here comes Gibson to score and it's three nothing Eagles as Kaylee Roper comes off the bench and comes through clutch. See Roper doing a fantastic job there. Coach Giros loves having his players hit opposite field and Roper doing a fantastic job right there, landing just over the head of Amaya Ross over at first and making her way on over to the bag. That's her third run batted into this season and her first hit since February 9th. That's got to feel good. First pitch on the way is a strike of the inside corner. And Sharela shows bunt and pulls back 0-1. It's now three runs on five hits for the Eagles. But just a handful of innings to go, looking to hold on against number 16 ranked Florida State here. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Swing and it slapped right to the third baseman Beecham. He doesn't have to move an inch. She plays it on a knee. Turbid Tuck back into the game at shortstop. Will be Sophie Wiley. First pitch on the way to Flaherty is sky to short. And look at that. Wiley just back into the game. Able to squeeze it for out number one. Another defensive substitution as well. Into the game in left field for Olivia Black is Avery Viancos. Yes, Avery Viancos, a junior staple been rotating in and out with Black so far this season. 
She started last weekend against USF, and we haven't really seen her since besides a few end-of-game substitutions. But for the most part, she's been helping to really anchor the outfield with Oaks, their combined experience, and how they work together. Just really fantastic. And, you know, she's not only a great player here at FGCU, she's a member of the Chilean national team who plays over in Spain every summer. And she plays center field and usually leads off for them. Incredible. Getting the opportunity here in the back half of this one. 1-0 one is taken down low ball two. This is Kennedy Harp now batting in Janai Kerr's spot. Again, Kerr started the game, reached on an E4 in the third, then was back picked on the base paths to begin that inning. And then head coach Ani Alameda went to her bench and brought in the freshman Harp, who gets her first step out of the day. Here's the 2-0. Up and away ball three, three and oh. You know, seeing Harp coming in, especially in place of Kerr, who has really anchored that outfield, and then coming and having Harp in as a freshman, it's really a lot of trust in her recruits and her newer players on this team. She's got a lot of leadership in this older half of her offense and defense, but these freshmen really doing a great job stepping up as well. Absolutely, and the beauty of these non-conference early season contests as we do get close to approaching conference play for both teams is the opportunity to get some of the younger players some opportunities whether that's freshmen or some underclassmen who have maybe been in limited roles get to see them in live action and almost audition for the latter part of the season absolutely and as you get into the deeper end of the season it's all about falling back on that experience and who you can trust the most. And that's going to be your older players with more experience. But you know what? When they leave, you're not going to want to throw someone in who's a sophomore or a junior and hasn't seen the field yet. You want them to have some of those experiences, get those freshmen and underclassmen nerves out, and give them the opportunity to prove themselves and why they're the first choice. 3-2 is just a little bit upstairs for ball four. A good at-bat from Harp in her first plate appearance of the day. And some good speed over at first base here with one down. Harp out of Lawrenceville, Georgia. Appearing in what is just about her 12th game of her college career so far. So here's Beecham now. And one swing could reinsert FSU into this game. Again, trailing just by three runs. And it hasn't because they've had limited opportunities it's more so a couple of base running mistakes and a struggle to hit with runners in scoring position first pitch is swung and a torch down the line but hooking foul 0-1 and, and you know what Max that's the difference between these two teams right now in why FGCU has the lead they both have five hits and two errors defensively it's just a matter of which team has been able to capitalize on their hits and on those errors made by the opposing team, and so far this game, that's been FGCU. Something else to note as well, this is the second game the Seminoles have played today. This one ripped on a line, but right at the left fielder in Viancos, who was just inserted into the game, allowed out number two off the bat of Beecham. Back to first goes Harp, as that makes way to Kaylee Harding. But what's so interesting about this matchup is you have one of the best pitching staffs in Division One softball. Again, this pitching staff for the Eagles entering today with an ERA under two. And you have one of the best offenses in Florida State who entered this morning averaging just under eight runs per game. The Eagles winning that battle so far as the first pitch to Harding's outside, ball one. It's always so interesting to look at FGCU and what Coach Daros is gonna do pulling from his bullpen because there are so many pitchers. He has the ability to pitch by committee or ride a single arm as long as he can. He tries to do both, and as soon as one of his pitchers starts to struggle a little too much, he says, hey, it's okay. These are your teammates. They've got you, and this bullpen is very strong for the Eagles. And so far today, they've gotten a gem from Angelina Bonilla, looking to get through a complete five now. 2 hours is upstairs, ball three. Three balls, no strikes. And pitching has been contagious on this staff. 
for the Eagles. You mentioned it was Allison Sparkman earlier this week on Wednesday against Sacred Heart. A complete game shutout. And Bania looking very similar so far here today. She is behind 3-0 and here on Harding. Here's the pitch. Runner goes, pitches strike, throw from the knees from Peterson, and it's not in time. Three and one the count, a close play over there, a one-hop strike, but Harp able to slide in safely. Her third stolen base of the year. Very similar with both the speed and the throw, so when we saw Nikki Gibson slide in under that tag just back in the bottom of the fourth, you saw Michaela Edenfield not very happy. The throw was perfectly on target, just like with Neely Peterson's right here. It's the runner that's able to just slide in half a second before the tag gets there. And that's a big stolen base. We mentioned both of these teams are aggressive on the bases. Base it likely scores Harp now if Harding can find the outfield grass. Your arms left to right in the outfield for the Eagles, Biancos, Oaks, and Shirela. 3-1. Perfectly placed to strike. Three and two. Michaela Edenfield, the team leader in home runs on deck here for the Seminoles. Let's not forget, no matter the result of this game, they will face each other again on Sunday. Three, two. Swing and a tapper to third. Gobbled up by Gibson. Her throw in time to retire the side. Angelina Bonilla. So far. Here from FGCU, it's 3 nothing Eagles as they play host to number 16th ranked Florida State. And we have a new arm on the mound for the Seminoles. Left-hander McKenna Reed into the game for starter Allison Royalty. As she takes on over here in the fifth. First pitch on the way, dribbled down the third baseline. It rolls foul for strike one. As Riley Oaks leads it off here for the Eagles. Max Tanzer here joined alongside Taylor Marks. And we knew this was going to be a good one, but pitching has really run away with this headline here so far. Absolutely. And then this is a really smart call by Lonnie Alameda, bringing in a left-handed pitcher against this very strong left-handed offense by FGCU. That lefty-lefty matchup is just really tricky for some reason. And you'll see Coach Diros of his eight pitchers, one of them is a lefty as well, and he always says, it's a different look in the way that lefties are able to beat up on left-handed hitters is something else. Especially coming off of the right-hander in royalty. Here's the 1-1. One -one. Misses upstairs. Two balls, one strike, the count. 22 innings of work so far this season for Reed. An ERA that sits at 5-7-3. 21 strikeouts in those 22 innings of work. Here's the wind of the 2-1 delivery. Swing and a line drive right to the third baseman, Beecham, who has been a vacuum so far over at the hot corner. It's back-to-back -back plays that were almost carbon copies of each other over there for Beecham at third. And one down now for the Eagles. And those plays by Beecham, nothing for Sharela and Oaks to hang their heads about just little missiles that Beecham is able to just get her glove on and make the play for. Here's Megan Ricks, lefty on left, first pitch is swung in and slashed. Nice stop by Flaherty at second. She spins and throws, she got her. What a play by Devin Flaherty. Able to palm it up, ranging towards her left and on the cut of the outfield grass. A no look spin and strike to first for out number two. It's plays like that that show that this FSU team, although they've made a few errors and haven't been able to capitalize on their runs, it's still a massive threat to anyone they face, and that includes these Eagles. Takes a hit away from Rex. Here's Peterson. First pitch is taken upstairs for ball one. And a tough day for Peterson so far, at least at the plate. A couple of ground outs, including a double play that came back in the third inning. Now 0 for her last five, looking to break out in a big way right here. Lefty on right for her. Here's the 1-0. Swing and this one's belted deep. Left center field. Away case her back. Looking up. It's off the base of the wall. Heading into second with ease is Peterson. She's got a double and a runner in scoring position. Now for the Eagles with two down. And that is what Neely Peterson and this Eagles offense needed. 
to just get themselves going. And I'm going to assume that Coach Deros is going to add a bit more speed to the base paths in exchange for Peterson. And it will be number five freshman Cameron Feast coming on in to run. She's got a lot of speed, especially as one of those famed outfielders for FGCU. The FGCU outfield is chock full of speed. And you see that traditionally on, some t on a lot of teams, but this is next level. And I believe we're seeing a pinch hitter as well as Duncan's going to come into the game for Wittenberg, who was the DP. So a couple of substitutions made here by David Deeros. So Duncan, a freshman this year, looking to drive in Feast, who was just inserted into the game as a pinch runner over at second base. Absolutely, Annalyn Duncan. We've seen her at a few appearances to start over at third base. And she'll come in to pinch hit as well. Great bat and a lot of power from her. Misses down and away, one and all. For the runs for the Eagles today, two in the second, one in the fourth inning. For Duncan, this is a chance to drive in her fourth run of the year. She's driven in three, hitting 188. 1-0, check swing, roller to short, charging his Torres. Six and up, throws in the run in time to get in for out number three. No runs on a hit, no errors of Florida Gulf Coast University. Right in the thick of things here in the FGCU Spring Break Classic. Max Tanzer here joined alongside Taylor Marks. First pitch from Bonilla. Misses outside ball one as it's four, five, and six. Stew up here for FSU. Been a good one so far as Bonilla already threw five scoreless innings has limited this dominant offense to just five hits. 1-0, right over the heart of the play to strike. 1-1. One one. Of course, this is an FSU team that lost to Oklahoma in the final round of the Women's College World Series last year. How about Oklahoma's win streak ending earlier this week? That was on Sunday. Stop the streak, 71 wins in a row. Next pitch misses inside ball two. Two and one the count. Seven to five loss to the Raging Cajuns of Louisiana on Sunday. One of the best mascots out there in conference, I'll tell you that. But what an impressive run that was for Oklahoma. And you know what, Max? I'm not a Sooners fan personally, but I have so much respect for Patty Gasso and her dynasty that she has created. There's no question that it will go down in the history books. But it's always nice to see a good team take a good loss right there. And that was one of them. Two and two the count here with nobody out. Here's Benia's pitch. Swing and a flip shot, shallow center, raging in Oaks. She has to play it on a hop, it's down a base hit. Andenfield leads off with a single here for the Seminoles. And that opens up the top of the sixth as Amaya Ross comes to the plate here. And you're absolutely right. So good for the game of softball, one, but two. How many times do you see a season like that in any sport? What were they, 62 and one or something like that? It was... It was crazy on their way yeah, they're to a College lost. World Series ring. I believe their only loss last season was to Oklahoma State, their in-state rival. You know, everyone's got those rivalries in state, the state school, and the U of whatever state, whether it's Michigan State, Michigan, Florida, Florida State, as we see here, one of those teams, or Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. We have a pinch hitter, by the way, here for Ross. It's Bueno into the game, another left-handed hitter. As the Seminoles go to their bench. One on, nobody out. Pitch is taken outside, ball one. You can see the catcher in Peterson hopping up a couple of times. Some aggressive secondaries over there at first base. Running over there, redshirt junior Annie Porter, transferred from Mercer, but she is a Florida native. So we've got a pair of Florida natives coming in and making their first appearance in this game. 1-1, one, one, swing and a miss. Another diabolical off-speed offering. The count moves to 1-2. and two. It's Angeli Bueno at the plate. A freshman this season out of Oviedo, Florida. Oviedo, Florida, same place Riley Oaks hails from, actually. So 
We'll see some familiarity there. Snapped her to first again, not in time, two and two. That's a fun moment. Of course, Oaks in center field this evening, as per usual for FGCU. So those two likely very familiar with each other. Gotta imagine they've gotten the opportunity to say hello, especially both being here this entire weekend. Runner goes, pitch down low, blocked by the catcher in Peterson, and Porter gets into second base without a contest. Three and two, nobody out now. And a chance for Bueno to get the Seminoles on the board for the first time today. Three, two, swing and a line drive. Top spin to second, caught on the line by Meek. She dives back to the bag at second, but Porter will get back in time. Meek has been all over the place defensively so far tonight for FGCU. And a big out number one. Tiffany Meek over at second base is a force to be reckoned with. And she knows immediately she makes that catch. She's diving for that bag, trying to double them off right there. But either way, good effort by Meek. Able to get that first out and very close to that second. Here's Torres, shows bunt, pulls back. 1-0, looked like FGCU had the wheel play on there with Gibson charging at third and Wiley the shortstop covering the third base bag. Again, it's Porter over at second base. Coming into the game to run for Edenfield, the catcher for the Seminoles. Torres, one for two today. Pitch is upstairs, ball two. So lined up to second, was robbed of a hit on an amazing diving catch from Tiffany Meek. And then single to open up the fourth, but was retired quickly on a double play ball. Hitters count for her here at two balls and no strikes. Benia delivers, here's the pitch. Just outside, ball three, three and oh. A couple of close misses here from the Eagles right-hander. You see Potter over at second, getting a bigger lead than you'd see most try and dare against Neely Peterson, but you do have a bit of a cushion being on second base farthest away from her, but as we saw with Janai Kerr, that's not always a guarantee. Three and one the count now for Benia. Her longest outing of the year so far was back on February 24th here at home versus Boston College. It was just an out away from a complete game, went six and two thirds. Three one is poked on the line, left field down for a base hit. Bianco's up with it. Her throw to the plate not in time. Heading for second now is Torres. Here's the throw, it's late. Aggressive base running, paying dividends now for the Seminoles. A single for Torres. And here they come, marching here in the sixth inning. Second and third. One down here for Waycaser. You know, just a great piece of hitting by Torres. An incredibly aggressive base running by this FSU team. And you know... Peterson ready to up and fire that one. They were, they're not afraid of throwing the ball around to try and get some outs. And with runners on second and third now and only one away, Waycaser is a huge threat. She's 0 for 2 today. First pitch is swung and flow in a right field, fairly deep. Sharela makes the catch. Tagging from third is Edded Field. The throw not in time. Waycaser drives in the first run of the night for the Seminoles with a sack fly to right, and it's 3-1 as Porter comes around to score from third. Bonilla might not get the shutout on her record anymore, but still letting one run score in exchange for an out in keeping. It looks like Coach Jaros is coming out, but of just 60 had she ended up over on third. So great throw by Sharela over from right field. That is a very difficult throw to make from right across the field. And it was on target, so. Here's a daunting hitter in Dak, now hitting 350 on the year. How about this? Batting 455 with runners in scoring position. She has Torres in scoring position as she steps to the plate and takes inside for ball one. Still no homers for her this season. But with one swing of the bat, could bring us back where we started here in Southwest Florida. Again, a run already in on the sack fly from away case, sir. Bonilla ready, the 1-0 is over the inside corner, strike one. 
the Knolls have not been able to capitalize on some of these hits as much as the Eagles have, especially looking at runners in scoring position. And you see that reflected in the score, but Katie Deck, a big threat at the plate, like you said, and we're gonna see they still have a, a good amount of time to work with. So far today, the Seminoles one for five with runners in scoring position. Just two for nine with runners on base. They need a knock in a big way right here. They are out hitting FGCU with seven hits to the Eagles six. Here's the two one, right over the heart of the plate, strike two, two and two. And you'll see that a lot if a team is out, if one team is out hitting another but still falls short of that win, it's just the timeliness of those hits and capitalizing on where the runners are. You can be hitting all the way through the lineup, but if you can't get those runners in, then those hits don't mean much. Two twos, up and away ball three. Count runs full at three and two. After Dak, Devin Flaherty, the 9-0 hitting second baseman. Two up, then it'll be the top of the order in Hart. Here for the Seminoles. Doesn't get much bigger than this here on a Friday night in Fort Myers. Two run lead for the Eagles, tying run at the plate. Three two is just inside, ball four. Snap throw to second. Back in time is Torres. A gutsy take, but an intelligent take from Dak. And she keeps this inning alive. A really close one off the inside corner. The lights just coming on here in Fort Myers. We may not have a football team at FGCAU, but this is a beautiful type of Friday night lights with the ASUN tournament for women's basketball over at Alico Arena. And right next door at Swanson Stadium, FGCU baseball playing against Fairfield after they finish their road stint against FSU. It's gonna be Janai Kerr back into the game over at first base, or excuse me, correction. First pitch on the way to Flaherty, down low ball one. It's actually Autumn Belvi over at first base into the game to run for Dak. First and second, two down, tying run at first. That is Belvi. And the go ahead run at the plate here in Flaherty. Here's the 1 0. Swing at a high, towering fly ball, shallow left, going out is Wiley. She reaches up to make the catch. Fantastic work from Angelina Bonilla as she limits the damage to one and strands the tying run at first base. We head to the bottom of the sixth. Eagles lead night of 3-1. Eagles lead here in the bottom of the sixth inning as they look for some final insurance before they head out for the top of the seventh. Three outs away from picking up the win against ranked Florida State. Would be just an incredible win for the Eagles right here. Would love to go into the top of the seventh with a cushion as Nikki Gibson leads things off. Here's the 1 0. Swinging a hard top spinning ground ball to short. Stabbed on a hop by Torres. She's been busy as he, she throws over in time for out number one. If you're an Eagles fan, you're actually pretty excited and comfortable with those who are due up right now. Gibson just being retired, but. Meek right behind her and Avery Biancos, who has entered the game in left field for Olivia Black, waiting on deck. We've seen those seven, eight, or those six, seven, eight hitters come up and be ready to do some damage. Harding over in right center is able to reel it in. So two down quickly here for the Eagles. Again, it's Reed, the left-hander, back in the mound for the Seminoles. She came into the game for starter Allison Royalty. Back in the fifth inning, not a terrible day for Royalty, might we add. Four innings, did allow three runs. Has not gotten run support as the Eagles pitching has stuffed these Seminoles' bats. Big question is, does Benia come out for the seventh? Here's Viancos, her first plate appearance. She shows bunt and pulls back for ball one. Viancos into the game for Olivia Black, as Taylor alluded to, a defensive replacement a couple innings ago. What's your call here? Are you sending out? Benia for the seventh inning? You know, she started to struggle back in the sixth, gave up one of those runs, but if I were Coach Jaros, I would put my faith in his senior and keep her in and just let her finish this out. Cap out an amazing upset, a tough game put up by both sides, but I wouldn't be surprised to see another pitcher come out, maybe Claire Malding or 
Allie Hume to finish things out. I'm also not surprised if I see one of those two starting in the game following against Western Michigan. 1-1, one, one, slashed foul, 1-2 the count. And the beauty of it is, is if you have Benia go complete here, then you get a clean slate for game two. There is something to note here for the Seminoles. They played already earlier today once. It was an 8-3 win over Purdue. But have not been able to transfer that offense here in their second game of the day. Here's the wind and the 1-2 from Reed. Swing and it slashed foul again, 1-2. And, and it's been a loud, rambunctious crowd this evening. We mentioned plenty of Seminoles fans here in attendance. The fans on the hills. Also down that left field line. We got at least, what, 50 to maybe 70 fans lined up over there. Watching just an absolute beauty of a game here this evening. 1-2 and two the count here on Viacos. Here's the pitch. Off-speed pitch just upstairs, 2-2. Two and two. It's been quite a tight zone on both sides of the ball so far tonight. The athletics department here at FGC was very excited to announce that Sunday's game, March 10th, where FGCU will face Pitt, and then FSU once again is completely sold out, and I wouldn't be surprised to hear that this one sold out as well. 2-2, two, two, swing and a miss for strike three. Reed able to toss together a scoreless 1-2-3, bottom of the sixth. A precipice of what would be a pivotal win here on this Friday night. 3-1 to one lead here against number 16 ranked Florida State University as the first pitch from Angelina Bonilla is fired in for a strike. Bonilla looking for her first complete game of the season, what would be the 12th of her collegiate career. Into the game to pinch hit for Devin Flaherty, Kaylee Mudge. Next pitch misses down low, one and one. And for Mudge, who started 67 of the 69 games for FSU last year, this is just game number 10 of 17 total opportunities. And they go to the bench to have her start off this seventh. Benia delivers the 1-1, one, one. upstairs ball 2-2-1. Two, two and one. Max Tanzer here joined alongside Taylor Marks. Thank you so much for tuning in here on ESPN Plus, wherever in the world you're listening and watching. And Taylor, it's huge to see Mudge here in the top of the seventh inning. Absolutely. Kaylee Mudge has been dominant over the years, and it surprised a lot of people to not see her out here like we have, especially in recent years like last year. But whatever she's going through, whether it's an injury or just not being able to perform as as she used to. She is a fifth year senior and we're gonna see here what she can do just like that. 2-2 two, two is slashed to left. Viancos has it in her tracks. Out number one. Hard contact right there from Mudge. And now the Eagles are two outs away for Mudge now six for 22 on this season. And the lineup will flip over as Beecham will come to the plate. Beecham one for three today, lined out sharply to left field back in the fifth inning. First pitch, off speed pitch, over the heart of the plate, strike one. It's a packed house here at the softball complex here on the campus of FGCU. And they're looking to see the Eagles put on the finishing touches to arguably it might be their most well-rounded game of the season on all sides of the ball. A one, taken down low, count evens up at one. Absolutely, and this is the second really big game FGCU has played this season, the other one being a midweek game against Washington. Just at the end of February, it was a 6-2 game, fantastically close and even just putting up those two runs against a top five team is phenomenal. And Off. FGCU likes to play these stronger teams. Off speed pinch gets Beecham to chase. And Benia is in the driver's seat at one ball and two strikes. It's been an up and down start to the season for the Seminoles. We're ranked as high as number four in America. Now 16, as we've mentioned, have lost a couple of games to unranked teams that I'm sure they would have liked back of course not a turnover in the circle for them as well it's been a revolving door that they've tried to solve and also done some royalty was still very stout for them today so 
an unorthodox performance from their offense, which entered the morning averaging 7.8 runs per game. Just one, one today so far. 1-2, spot in the dirt. to catch Peterson. 2-2. Two, two. You know, Max, one of those losses um, on the side of FSU wins given them by a Sun rival, Jacksonville, who FGCU will be traveling to in the second week of conference play, so about two weeks from now. And, you know, looking down that left field line again, it seems like that crowd on the side is just getting bigger. So many people trying to fit into this area with two other sports going on at the same time. Say, hey, why don't I poke by the softball game real quick? Flown to the air to right. Sharela reaches up. It's over her head and trickling to the wall. To second is Beecham. She's heading for three. The relay is in time. Oh, my goodness. What a relay from Sharela to Meek, who threw a one-hop bullet to third to retire Beecham. The base running woes continue for the Seminoles, and the Eagles are an out away from a masterful win here in Fort Myers. You know, I saw Beecham trying to stretch that into a triple. Her head was down when she rounded second, but you saw over there the coach tried to stretch it for three and is instead gunned down. Had she stayed at second, Harding represents the tying run of the plates. And, you know, it's just a big amount of energy and momentum for FGCU to close this out here. Rolled to third, fielded by Beecham. Make that Gibson. Her throw in time, and the Eagles do it. They take down number 16 ranked Florida State in a 3-1 to thriller here on this Friday night in Fort Myers. 